Working with image data in Python can be extremely powerful. From doing simple tasks like converting image formats, cropping and filtering images, all the way to using image data for machine learning. In this video, I'm gonna give you a basic introduction of how to work with image data with two of my favorite Python packages, matplotlib and OpenCV. By the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of how image data is structured and some of the things that are possible with image data using Python. Hi, my name is Rob. I'm a data scientist. I make videos about Python, machine learning, and I also stream on Twitch live coding. If you enjoy this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. All the code I'm working on today, I will share in the description as a Kaggle notebook so you can copy that code and interact with it very easily. Okay, let's get started working with image data in Python. Okay, so here I am in a Kaggle notebook. The nice thing about this is I'll link it in the description. You should be able to copy it if you have a Kaggle account and edit the data yourself and explore what we've coded up today. So I'll show you here on the right side that I've imported a data set. This is a cat and dog image data set. So we can have some example images to work with today. It should be pretty fun. So we're gonna start here with some basic imports. Uh, I import pandas as pd typically, import numpy as np. Um, we're also gonna use a package called glob that'll let us list all the files of our dogs and cat images very quickly as a list. And then we're gonna import the two image base packages that we'll be using today. So cv2 and then we're gonna import matplotlib pylab as plt and matplotlib can be used for a lot of things but it does have functionality for interacting with image data we're going to start by reading in images the very first thing we should learn right so before we do that we're going to have to get a list of all of our images and this is where we're going to use glob so let's uh, go into the directory where i know all these dog and cat images are and let's search for any jpeg images in the dog directory that um, ends with jpg so this is going to be our dog files and similarly let's just make a cats one since we know there's a cats directory and put this here now we can see with our cat files let's uh read in an example image file so we're gonna take an example one here from our list. This is the cat image file 1856. And we're gonna read it in first with matplotlib using plt.imread. This will read in this file name and you could put whatever file name you have of an image here and it should read it in. It can do JPEGs, PNG files, a bunch of different formats. And we're gonna save this as image MPL for matplotlib. Let's also learn how to import the image using CV2. So CV2 has the exact same function, I am read, and we'll read in the same cat files 20 and call this image CV2. Now, I also want to show you what the output of this is so that the actual data that we've read in here is actually a numpy array. If we do a type on this, we can see that this is a numpy array and the shape of this numpy array is um, three dimensions. And we'll go into what each of these mean, but we're gonna print these first. So let's print the matplotlib shape and the CV2 shape just to confirm that they are the same. So 232 by 350 and three. So let's learn a little bit about what this array represents, because that's very important to understanding how to work with image data. To explain this, I found an illustration online that I'll link in the description of uh, really showing what these values represent. So the image array, you can think of in the format of height, width, and then channels for this height and width. And here we have three channels. Our height for this image is 232 and our width is 350. And each of these values in the array are different and they refer to the intensity of that given pixel. So think of the image as 
broken down into a big grid of pixels and each of those pixels has a value. You could see here that the maximum value when you read in an image is usually to around 255. So a lot of times what you'll see is actually dividing the pixel values by 255 to make it a, no a normal number between zero and one. But working with the pixel values as zero to 255 is fairly common. Just to visualize this even more, let's actually take all of these values in this NumPy array and let's flatten them into one long array with uh, values between zero and 255. And let's make this a pandas series. And we can actually plot a histogram and let's title this distribution of pixel values. And let's do plot show. So here we can see the distribution of the pixel values for this entire image across the three channels that we have. And we could see that there's some at zero and a lot of them peak at around here around 75, but this just sort of shows you that each pixel has a unique value that contributes to the image that you see. So this isn't too exciting and I'm sure you wanna see some images. So let's display the actual image that we're, we've loaded in here. So let's call this display images. So we're gonna use matplotlib to show this image and first we'll create a subplot with a fig size. So our image is set in a certain figure size. And then we'll use matplotlib's im show to display this matplotlib image. And if I display that here, you can see that there are some grid lines and we also have the X and Y values, which we don't wanna show. So we're gonna take this axis and turn those off. And there we go, pretty cute picture of a kitten here. So we can now display an image that we've loaded in using matplotlib. So next I wanna talk about what these channels actually represent. So we're gonna talk about something called RGB or red, green, blue representation. And that's the way that these images are loaded in when you load them in with CV2 or matplotlib. There are three channels and they represent red, green, and blue. Any combination of those three channels can actually represent all the colors that your eye can perceive. So three channels you can think of as these stacked NumPy arrays of all red channels, all green channels, and all the blue channel values. That's why if you look at our uh, image shape, we have this height, width, and then the three channels. There are other ways of representing the image data, but RGB is fairly common, so we're gonna stick with that for now. So we're gonna do this by making another subplot, but this time we're gonna do a one by three grid of plots. And in our first plot, we're gonna show the image of this matplotlib for only the first channel. And we're gonna use a color map of reds to visualize this in the color that it represents. And let's just copy this three times for the other axis we're gonna do. We're gonna show the other colors. So this will be greens and blues. Using the C map just is easier for representing what we're trying to show. And then we're gonna also turn off all the grids like we did before for these three different um, images. And finally, we're gonna show them. So what do we have here? Okay, so we have the three different channel representations of this image from above. Let's set titles for them. Green and blue. There we go. So each of these three look fairly similar, but if you notice like up here in the top right of the image, that it's darker for the red and green channel and pretty light for the blue channel, that's because that part of the image has very little blue in it rep to represent this uh, color that you see here in the top right of the image. Now, another thing I wanna touch on real quickly is the difference between the matplotlib read function and the CV2 read function because they actually read these channels in different orders 
And if you don't know that at first, it gets pretty um, confusing why the images look different when you load them with CV2. So all you need to know is that CV2 reads the image in channels uh, blue, green, red, and matplotlib reads them in as RGB. And we're gonna display this as well in similar manner that we did above. So let's make a subplot to one by two, fig size of 10 by five. And in the first plot, we're gonna show the CV2 version of the image. And in the second version, we're gonna show the matplotlib version. And doing all this axis turning off, we'll set the titles. So you might not notice that at first, but it becomes very apparent when you have images that have certain colors that stand out. But here, let's look in the top right corner. We can see that the CV2 um, or OpenCV version that we've read in has a different color and shade as the one on the right that matplotlib has. And the different display packages might expect it in different orders. Converting the order of these channels is pretty easy using CV2's convert color. And what you do is you provide it the image. So we're gonna provide it the CV2 image. And then we use CV2's color BGR to RGB, which will convert this to uh, RGB format. So image CV2 RGB is what we'll call this. And then let's go ahead and display this like we have before using our subplots and image show this. There we go. So we've converted the CV2 image into the same format that the matplotlib image uh, expects. Now we're just gonna quickly go over some of the basic things you can do with CV2 with these image files. We're gonna call this section image manipulation and there are a lot of things you can do with the image file once you have it loaded in. Uh, these are just a few to get you started. Let's go and use one of the dog image files to switch it up here a little bit. And we're gonna use matplotlib's image read, use our dog pull from our dog files. I found a good one here. And then we'll, um, we'll go ahead and display this dog file like we have before. Oh, look at that cute pup. Let's show how we can convert the color of this image similar to how we converted the channel order of the colors using CV2's convert color. We're gonna provide it this image and then we're gonna actually use, uh, we're gonna use CV2's RGB to gray and that'll convert this red, green, blue image into a grayscale image. Um, and if we look here at the image gray shape of the NumPy array, it's actually now only two dimensions because there's only one channel and that's the grayscale channel. So this is just the height and width of this image. Let's go ahead and make a subplot, put this image in there. Let's use the grays C map when we plot this, turn the axis off and show it. There we go, we have this image has been converted into grayscale and uh, that's just one of the manipulations you can do. Next, we're gonna talk about resizing and scaling of an image. So this can be done using CV2, using the CV2 resize function. So if we provide it this image, then we could also provide it a new size that we wanna provide, but we're not gonna use that. Instead, we're gonna use a function that will reduce the size by a certain percentage using fx and fy. So we're gonna convert this image into a quarter of the size that it was before, and then we are gonna use our same plot code to plot this. You can see that it's a little bit more pixelated. That's because it's been shrunk down small enough that when we plot it at the same scale, it looks much more zoomed in. But this is now a resized image. And if I do the shape on this, you can see the size of it is now 125 by 125 instead of the original size. We don't necessarily have to make it the uh, same dimensions as what it was before. So let's actually use that same CV2 resize to resize this image into stretched out different dimensions. So instead of giving the FX and FY for the percentage that we wanna change it, we're actually giving the new 
height and width dimensions that we want this image to be reshaped into. And let's go, let's go ahead and plot this. And we have, you can see that stretched a little bit. Um, the height is now lo longer than the width. Sometimes, especially in machine learning, you want to upscale or resize the image to a specific size that the model expects as an input. So this is one of the ways you can do it, but you can also upscale uh, using the image resize. Now, one important thing to know when upscaling is you need to pick an interpolation type that the mod that CV2 will use in order to know how to stretch these pixels out from their original size. So let's do that. We'll do CV2 resize of this image. Now let's make it 5,000 by 5,000. So this will be a lot bigger and we need to provide it the interpolation. If you read in the CV2 documents, there are a lot of different interpolation techniques and each of them have their own um, significance. So check that out and try out different types of resizing. But let's plot this. It's gonna look pretty much the same as before, but this image file, if we look at the image resize shape again, it is much larger than the original image shape, which was just 500 by 500. We've actually made it 10 times larger of an image file. So the last thing we're gonna do is show some manipulations you can make to the image data using filtering in CV2. And there are these things called kernels that we can apply to the image. And let me show you some examples here. Uh, this is from a nice article I found. We'll call this CV2 kernels. And you could see that by applying different kernels to the images, you can get um, different results like filtering, blurring, sharpening, and we're gonna show how to do some sharpening and some blurring of these images to sh just to show it as an example. So let's show how to sharpen first. So what we have to do, and we'll provide it this kernel that can be used for sharpening the image, just like this as a NumPy array. And then we're gonna use CV2's filter 2D we have a two dimensional image here. We'll provide it the image negative one for this is the um, the depth. And then we'll provide it this kernel for sharpening. And that will become our sharpened image. Let's go ahead and display this sharpened, sharpened image with the same code that we have before. And you can see that the sharpening sort of distorts the image, but you could see how it apply, has applied to the image to make it uh, look a little different. Next, let's show blurring the image. We're gonna use a different kernel here. This kernel uh, will look like this. If I show you just what it looks like, um, it has, it's, it's blurring every of the pixel in the kernel filter 2D on this image with the different kernel, three by three, and blurred. We'll display this again like we have before. Turn the uh, grid lines off, set the title, and show this. That's our blurred image. If we wanted to make it even more blurred, we could make this larger. It looks a little dark there, but more or less blurred. You can see how changing some of these parameters can uh, really change the way the image lo looks. Let's put it back to nine for the blurred example. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is, now that we've manipulated the image, we know how to read it in, we know how to display it, we might wanna save it once we've done some processing. So you can um, save the image pretty easily using CV2 or matplotlib. So with matplotlib, you have this I am save function and you provide it the image name. Here we'll name it as a PNG. This is a different format than what we read it in is. And we'll give it this uh, image or let's do the blurred image. And with CV2, you can, you can use I am right, CV2 dog, 
PNG, and then you provide it the name of the NumPy array with the image you want to save. Now CV2 does provide an output that uh, is true when the image is written. It's a little different than matplotlib, which doesn't provide any output. And that's the end. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new in this basic tutorial of how to manipulate and work with image data using Python, matplotlib, and OpenCV. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything you liked or anything you want to see me make a video about in the future. Until next time, bye.